My name is Nadia Tao. I've been involved in activism for as long as I can remember. And by now, the climate crisis is almost like old news to me. When I was talking to people, figuring out what I wanted to say here, it kept coming up that I could, should and could say what needed to be said. That I had a unique viewpoint as a child. And I was thinking, haven't they heard this before? Aren't there young people all over the world speaking up and saying this thing that needs to be said, that unique and terrible piece of information? Why do I need to say it again and again and again? <laughs> Reduce, no, yeah, reuse, reduce, recycle, no plastic, and save the earth. Please compost! Yay! I am tired of people in D.C. bending to the will of oil industries and fossil fuel and all the energy companies. They should... And I don't know, I am scared. I'm terrified of the future. Um, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and the reason why I'm here today is because I'm a world citizen, and I'm a steward of this earth, and we all are. Therefore, it is my responsibility to be here and fight to protect it. Okay, um, I'm a sophomore at Avril Park High School. Um, I'm here because our time is up. Um, you know, adults keep saying that it's up to the youth to do something that they're not going to be here. Um, so why does it matter? But it matters because it matters for your kids and it matters for your grandkids and it matters for, you know, the next generations that might not even have a future. So that's why I'm here. And it wouldn't have happened, would not have happened without Merck and Cher. We live in the era of Donald Trump. And so we live in the era of era of alternative facts and we have to get the facts straight yeah. now the New York Power Authority and OGS would like you to think that they got religion and they're moving in the right direction well they're only pointing in the right direction they're not moving yet New York Power Authority has substantially modified its previous microgrid proposal and are no longer planning to install frac gas turbines in Sheridan Howard to power the Empire State yeah. Yeah. It is also our understanding that NIPA plans to replace emergency backup generators that are polluting the neighborhood. At this time, we do not have sufficient information to fully evaluate the proposal. But based on what we have learned so far, it seems to be a step in the right direction. Yeah. But it falls far short of our proposal for a renewable Empire State Plaza, one that could benefit tremendously from a geothermal system for heating and cooling. You simply can't have your head in the freezer and your feet in the furnace and argue that on average you're normal. We owe it to the future generations to leave them a sustainable planet. We will not succeed with half measures or less. And that's all I got to say for now. Good morning! Our first stop is in front of the Department of Environmental Conservation. The mission statement of the DEC is to conserve, improve, and protect New York's natural resources and environment, and to pre prevent, abate, and control water, land, and air pollution in order to enhance the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the state and their overall economic and social well-being. So I want to start off today by thanking the DEC for rejecting the Williams Pipeline in New York City. administration has done everything in its power to render the EPA not just useless, but malevolent. It has stocked the EPA with sociopaths in positions of authority, and that has undermined the career people there who are good people who have tried to keep this country safe for a long, long time. The EPA currently wants to basically take away the powers of the Clean Water Act from the DEC. And we need the DEC to live up to its mission statement. 
That has never been more apparent than today. We need to reject Cricket Valley. Also, just as uh, the uh, proposed power plant in Sheridan Hollow uh, was taken away, there's a power plant in Dan's Hammer. That can be also outright denied by the DEC. We are all facing extinction. If the time comes when you must step up as a whistleblower to stop this spread of fossil fuels in a rig system, you must do so. So let's hear it for the DEC to live up to their duty. of the New York State Controller, Don Annapoli. And the State Controller is in charge of the money for the state. Should the state be investing our money in fossil fuels? No! Right now, Don Annapoli keeps $11 billion in Exxon and Chevron and other fossil fuel companies. Is it time for New York State to divest? Yes! The other thing we want the state to do is to stop giving subsidies to fossil fuel companies. Right now they give $1.4 billion a year to fossil fuel companies. And do we think we should hold fossil fuel companies financially and criminally responsible for the damage they have caused? Why has the Albany Climate Strike March stopped at Agency Building 3 on the Empire State Plaza? We are stopping here because this is the building in which Governor Cuomo's Public Service Commission is housed. The Public Service Commission consists of five commissioners appointed by Governor Cuomo, and these five Public Service Commissioners have the power to regulate the utility companies and control the purse strings for most of the energy investments in New York State. These decisions tend to strongly favor business as usual and foot dragging on the road to a renewable energy economy. <laughs> yeah, you got it. On the eve of the climate strike, there wasn't any climate action on their agenda. <laughs> so yesterday, to call out the unacceptable do-nothing agenda, New Yorkers from all over the state showed up at the Public Service Commission meeting to demand that the agency take more urgent, aggressive, and sincere action to end utility company investments in fossil fuel infrastructure and power plants. I'm telling you that it's the Public Service Commission. They work for us, so we want to put the public back in the PSC. years to prevent irreversible damage from climate change. Eleven years, let that sink in for a moment. We're not here to debate climate change because climate change is a non-debatable, scientific, empirical fact. It is a crisis. We are here to tell you, to tell Congress, to tell our president, to tell the world that we need to act and we need to act fast.
Until now, we are faced with the reality that if we keep consuming, we will drown in our own gluttony. Six people died from vaping, and all of a sudden, we're banning that. But the climate has been changing for so long, we can't do anything. Are you kidding me? So what I think they need to recognize is that Gen Z is not a new silent generation. We're not just going to sit here and take it. We're going to get up. We're going to say, you're going to get voted out of office, as someone before me said. We need to vote, not just for ourselves, but for the well-being of other people. Now, one of the things a lot of politicians want to pretend they're on our side. And it's really important that the youth are willing to stand up and say, you know, you've had 30 years to solve this problem. And all we've gotten is a lot of hot air. And we need action now. And one of the international demands today was the call for a Green New Deal. We had a couple of specific demands we wanted to see here in New York. So. Number one, we demand an immediate ban on all new fossil fuel projects. Immediate? Immediate! Immediate? Immediate! Wait, immediate? Immediate! Like right now? Right now! For demand number two, we demand an immediate halt to all subsidies for fossil fuels from New York State. Right now, New York taxpayers fund almost $1.5 billion a year for fossil fuel related tax breaks and subsidies under state law. In effect, we are all, we are all paying to incentivize the continued use of fossil fuels when we should be doing just the opposite. For just one example, we still have a law in the books that subsidizes switching to gas heat, but nothing for switching to renewable heat sources, such as air heat pumps and geothermal. Our third demand is that we immediately invest $10 billion in the 2020 to 2021 state budget in a climate transition with funding for renewable energy efficiency and a Green New Deal. 40% of such funding must target disadvantaged communities. Thank you, Tess. All right. So, hello, my name is Sandy Steubing. I represent PAWS, the people of U Albany United for Safe Energy. And I give my heartfelt thanks to the students for organizing this rally and bringing us together. So, unfortunately, New York has a long history of failing to meet its climate goals. Since, yeah, that's not a surprise, is it? Since Governor Pataki first set in targets to increase renewable energy in 2002, the state has added less than 5% of its electricity from wind and solar. Less than 5% from all the way from 2002. Pretty poor. We must now match that 5% increase on an annual basis every year if New York is to do its part to avoid the tipping point beyond which we cannot and will not be able to claw our, our temperatures back to normal. And this tipping point, I think you probably all know, is going to happen by 2030 at the latest. So we got to do it right now. Our fourth demand is that we convert all public buildings and vehicles to zero GHG emissions by 2023. Give it up for Sister Andrea. And Andrea is spot on. This is the low hanging fruit of what we can do right now. The Green New Deal begins right now with moving all of our current public buildings to clean energy. More importantly, our fleets, our vehicles, our buses, they can all be converted to clean, green vehicles right now. And number five, we want to amend building codes to require all new buildings be carbon emission free by 2023. Thank you, Sophie. Now, do any of these demands sound difficult? No! Isn't there kind of an urgency to respond to these demands? Yes! Well, so this is what we're going to be taking up. I'm thinking we're going to take these up to, to give them. We're going to hand them to the governor and say, you need to do something about this. Yes! And we need to also thank Sandy. Sandy! Sandy for doing all the organizing of this, this effort. Yay, Sandy! But, 
and Andrea. All right, so we have a we have an energized group here. All right, thank you so much. Uh, pause in the next three minutes. We're gonna hear an amazing performance by a band called Leveda. They are probably one of my favorite local bands. So please stick around to hear from them. I'll, I'll kill you in a second. Thanks for being cool.